Hey creative people, you're watching Shiny Films, and today we're going to be jumping into the free image manipulation program GIMP, where I'm going to be showing you how to make these awesome YouTube thumbnails really easily. Today's video tutorial is going to be a piece of cake, it's going to be 1 out of 5 on the difficulty scale, and it'll be super easy for beginners. And before we begin, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Shiny Films, if you haven't already. I make tons of video editing tutorials and tutorials like this one, and you can follow me on Twitter as well. But let's just get straight on into the video tutorial. If you don't already know what GIMP is, it's a free image manipulation program, kind of like Photoshop. You can think of it like a free alternative to Photoshop. I usually use Photoshop to edit my thumbnails. And of course, GIMP doesn't have all the functionality of Photoshop, and it's not quite as good, but it works in a very similar fashion. So if you don't have the money to spend on Photoshop, GIMP is a really solid alternative to create your thumbnails. Today we're going to create a thumbnail from scratch. So let's begin. So here we are in GIMP. This is what it looks like when I first open GIMP. We have a toolbox on the left, a main window in the middle, and this layers and brushes window on the right. Just go to your main window, hit file, new to create a new document. By default it should be 1920 by 1080 width and height. This is what we're going to use for today's tutorial. It's the full HD size and it's what YouTube recommends you do for your thumbnails. If you don't already have 1920 by 1080, just type it into the width and height and then press OK. You should come up with a white or similarly colored background and an image document. So let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to create our thumbnail. Mostly when I create my thumbnails, I have a background, some kind of background and then I'll have text on top of that and a subject. Sometimes for the background layer, I'll use a pattern or a gradient or a color. And sometimes I'll use an image that I find off Google. Sometimes my subject can be a human, a person that's in the background photo that I've searched up on Google. And sometimes it can be a text or an effect that I'm working on for my thumbnail. The point is thumbnails change a lot, varying from video to video. And there's no one easy way to create a thumbnail. But today we're just going to go and create a background and then I'm going to show you how to add text and also how to put images in from Google. And that should be all the tools you need to know to create a thumbnail. So at the moment, we're on our background layer. As you can see here in the layers panel over here, we've created a background layer. You can think of this layer as an image, basically, that we're going to be working on our background on. And how do you create a background? Well, the easiest way and the first thing you should know is to create a fill background, basically to change this color to whatever color you want. The first step is to go to the fill tool over here. Down in fill type, you can have foreground color fill, background color fill, or pattern fill. Don't worry about pattern fill, but we're gonna worry about foreground and background color fill. The foreground color and the background color are these two colors here. The foreground is black at the moment, and the background is white. You can swap them using the arrows, and you can set them to the default by pressing this button here. But if you want to select a custom color to fill, Make sure you select your foreground color since the fill type is by default on foreground color fill. So just click on your black, your foreground color, and you can change it. You can use the color spectrum here to create a color. You can go up to go up in lightness and left and right to go more saturated or less saturated. For the purposes of today's video, I'm just going to create a nice, relatively strong red orange color. Just hit OK when you're done. Make sure you've got foreground color fill selected and just click once on your background and it should fill it in with this color. So this is a pretty easy way to create a color fill, but there's another way to do it if you want to make it a little bit more interesting than just one color fill. And that's to do a gradient. So just click on the gradient tool right next to it and you'll notice we have our foreground background gradient. You can see a preview of what this will look like over in the gradient space here. At the moment, it's basically a gradient slowly transitioning from this orange to our background color, the white. If you click on the gradient button here, there are a ton of preset gradients, which are useful for a whole bunch of different things. But for creating a background, you basically just wanna go foreground to background and select foreground and background custom colors. So let's just go into our background color by clicking on the white. And we're going to create a similar color, this kind of red, this pink maybe. And I might make this lighter and a bit less saturated. I'm just going to hit OK. Now we're going to drag from one corner of the screen to another. I'm going to go from bottom right to top left. Just let go to complete the gradient. 
now we have this really nice looking color gradient and it adds a lot more interest than if we just use the solid fill color. As a general rule of thumb, you want to make sure that your lighter color is towards the top of the image and that the darker color goes towards the bottom of the image. That's generally so that we just keep it looking nice. You can also change the shape of your gradient as well. For example, if you go radial, it'll create a more circle formation, which you can see if we drag our midpoint over here, like so, we have a more circular shape. And there's a whole ton of them as well. But if you just choose linear, you'll get a really nice gradient like this. But today we're actually going to be completely scrapping this color background and we're going to be finding a Google image to be using as our background. Now suppose that the thumbnail I'm creating today is going to be on how to add contrast to your images, for example. So I'm going to find a background which suits that. I'm just going to go to Google Images. If you have a proper stock photo uh, subscription to a site, then that will work much better. But in doubt, just go to Google Images. You can search for anything you like for your background image. But I do like, as I say, to put people in my background images. And the reason for this is if you have a person or a face there particularly, then it'll kind of attract the audience to that face. And it'll make sure that your thumbnail kind of sticks out a little bit more. So I'm just going to search up portrait photography. Now we get a whole ton of different results. What I'm going to do is the first thing that I'm going to filter is going to tools. I'm going to filter size so that we get larger than two megapixels. Then we'll make sure that we have an image that's above 1920 by 1080. And then in color, I want it to be really contrasty. So I'm just going to go black and white. Now I'm really liking this image here of Willem Dafoe. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on it, open it in new tab, and then I'm just going to hit right click, save image as, so we save the full resolution copy. Once we've downloaded it, it'll come up here in our uh, bar, in our downloads bar but down here. So just drag it and then hold alt tab and you can cycle through to your GIMP window and then just drag it in like so. You might get a little pop-up box like this, depending on the color space and profile of your new image. Usually you shouldn't get this, but if so, you can convert it or keep it up to you. It doesn't really matter too much. You'll notice that it is a little bit taller, but also a little bit slimmer than our default workspace. So just grab the scale tool over here and just click and drag to make it bigger. Now you can also see that it's distorting as we drag. So just hold shift and it'll keep in proportion. Then just let go. You can go to our move tool or you can just move it in the center here, but we're just gonna to go to our move tool and move the image over to the right here so that it fills the frame. Now you'll notice that we still had that background underneath. And the way that that was possible is because of these layers. We have the Willem Dafoe image as a separate layer above our background layer. If we just click on the eye, it'll make sure it's not visible, just temporarily. And you'll notice that we still have our background image intact. We just have our portrait photo on top. Interestingly, you can mess around with the blending of these layers by just clicking and dragging an opacity to change the see-throughness, basically, of the layer that you've selected. Alternatively, you can also go to the blending mode and select something like overlay to make sure that it blends differently. But for today's video, we're just going to go back to the default normal blending mode. Now it's time to add our text. Just click on the text tool over here and then drag to create a text box. Once you've created your text box, just type to add in your text. You can highlight it, then change its color and you can change its font and its size. Choosing a font is really, really important. If you don't already have a font for your channel or that kind of thing, what you can do is you can find a font preferably a sans serif font that works well for your channel. Two really good websites for this kind of thing are dafont.com and Google Fonts. dafont.com has a loads of different scripty, fancy title fonts that you can use, as well as really good basic sans serif block fonts that you can use. These are all free to download. Some of them have different copyright rules, but for the most part, they should be fine to use. Most of the fonts at Google Fonts have a much larger variety of situations that they could be used in. They're much more versatile, and best of all, you can be really sure about the rice. They're really free to use for anything. You can search for the type of font you want. So for example, if I only want sans serif, I can choose like so. And you can just go ahead and add fonts to the cart 
and then download them. Once you've got your fonts downloaded and installed by opening the packages, then you're going to want to restart GIMP and then your fonts should come up. Anyway, let's go back into GIMP and we're going to be choosing our font. I'm going to choose something like Montserrat Bold and I'm just going to be increasing the size. When I'm done with this text, I'm just going to quickly move it over to the side and then I'm going to quickly create another text box, like so. And then I'm going to add some more text. You could be done here, but I want to add one final adjustment to bring out the contrast in this thumbnail. To do this, I'm just going to quickly go into my text tool, highlight the text and change its text color to be black. Then I'm going to hit OK. And now we're going to add a drop shadow. To do this, go up to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. Under here, I want this to be really contrasty, so I'm going to make the blur radius zero, so it doesn't blur at all. And I'm also going to bring the opacity all the way up to make sure it's completely opaque. Then in the color, I'm going to set it to be white, so we get that contrast. I can also adjust the X and Y position to adjust its distance from the text layer. Then I'm just going to hit OK, and we're going to be done. And to really add that final layer of contrast as well, I'm just going to select my my portrait image here, my background. Then I'm just going to go to colors and brightness and contrast. Now I'm just gonna punch up the contrast to make it as contrasty as I possibly can for my thumbnail. And maybe a little bit brighter to adjust the exposure as well. And then I'm just gonna crush the contrast again. You can check the preview to preview what it's like before and after. And if you're happy, you can hit okay and be done with it. Of course, this is not meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but now you know how to create a background, how to add text, and how to apply some effects to make sure that your thumbnail really stands out. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like it so that other people find it. You can subscribe to my channel for more content just like this, and you can follow me on Twitter as well. I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.